and gentlemen, boys and girls, finally welcome to another episode of Honda Street Garage. I know it's been a long wait on this one, and that's because I wanted to do one big long video on putting the DA9 together. So this video has been sponsored by Hush Performance and Hossport. Uh, I have to give a big thank you to Robert Diaz of uh, Hush Performance and all the guys over there, as well as uh, Brian Gillespie of Hossport, VTech Academy. They both have channels. Uh, I will put links to their YouTube channels in the description below. As well as if you're interested in any Hush Performance products, you can go to their website right here on the screen and there's a link in the description. You can go to their website, look at any of their products and save 10% using code HSG. If you would, please go do that. Go subscribe to their channels. If you haven't subscribed to this one, please click like and subscribe. There's a lot that I need to go into, but I'm not gonna go into that right now. The next video is going to be the reasons why the DC2 is now gone and I've decided to take on DA9 as my main project car. I've been really excited about this build for a while because I've just, you know, fallen in love with DAs. I've always been a DAEF fan. You know, I've really had enjoyment in building this and blood, sweat, and tears, quite honestly. So check out the video, the build of the DA9 today. Um, there isn't any uh, footage of me ripping it up and down the street uh, because since I've put the car together and driven it, put a couple miles on it, uh, I've realized that I need a new radiator. It kind of starts to leak it when I start pushing the car hard. You'll see that soon enough once I get the car dialed in if you uh, like this channel. So check out the build of the DA9. Now I know many of you are probably upset by this. The car is sitting here cooling off. We're about to pull it into the garage. Yank that thing out. So the suspension and the wheels are gonna go onto the DA. I don't know if you can tell, but to me it already looks better. So anyway, let's get on with it. There's a DA with the motor out. And look what we got here, DC with the motor out. Everybody's so sad right now. So that is gonna go into here. And that is gonna go into here. Now this is kind of a difficult spot to see and to film. Basically, I'm trying to get the pedal set out with the DA. I'm going to have to drop the steering column and get these pedals out. Okay, we're going back to the old camera just for shits and giggles. It's a lot easier. It stays in focus a lot better right now. So here we are at the DA. I've been stripping the uh, engine bay down, trying to get everything ready. For this, I'm gonna be removing the power steering. Some people have asked, you know, how do you remove power steering? And it's as simple as just unbolt anything that you can find um, you can see I've got everything kind of hanging here ready to come out it's still got fluid in the system I'm gonna drain that follow the lines down and crack them loose and just remove it you've got some hoses that run out here on the front um, I'll disconnect them as needed to try to get it out I've got the uh, wiring harnesses for the headlights pulled out they're hanging here um, they're hanging down there Obviously, if you could see that, got rags to clean this thing up. I'm still undecided of whether or not I'm going to tuck the fuse box or not. It just really depends on how things go and how things are flowing. You know, a lot of people want to know how to put a hydro transmission into a DA. Well, there's a couple ways of doing it. Here's the pedal set that I've removed. And we have the Hush Performance bracket. I've got the master cylinder over there. It's gonna go here, but right now, before I get to that, I'm going to be cleaning this up some more and uh, tucking everything away as best as I can, as much as I can. So I'm gonna see how far I get, onward I go. I'm just focused on this project right now, so progress is progress, onward. And all I've basically done is removed every little thing that I can to uh, get this engine bay as clean as possible. Keep moving forward with cleaning this thing up. Oh, nothing, just removing the power steering bullshit. <laughs> so this is the product of cleaning. Slight brake line tuck. And the wires are going to go underneath there. I'm also going to be putting a fuse box back underneath where the floorboard is. Okay, so here it is. Here's the engine bay. Pretty much elbow grease down. Simple green. Use a little bit of simple green and elbow grease to uh, get this engine bay clean. I ordered some paint that matches. Uh, that's, you know, 
this original color. It should be here any day now, so I can actually touch up the engine bay, just, you know, kind of get any light scratches or light, light fade sections here. You know, the power steering was leaking pretty badly and did a number on it. So uh, a couple of things I've done, if you've noticed, is um, sort of did a semi wire tuck. And what I mean by that is that you can't see the wires going here. Um, they're actually kind of tucked down underneath there on both sides. I kind of, so I didn't have to cut any wires or anything like that. Um, I didn't really have time to kind of do that as well as I kind of tuck the brake lines underneath here. And of course, I've kept the AC lines connected the entire time, which I kind of wish I didn't, but I don't want to discharge the system out here. So that's partly the reason why I've kept that on. So today, uh, for right now, we're kind of at a standstill with the engine bay. So we're going to move on to what I'm very excited about is the pedal set. Now we're going to start working on the clutch issues. We're going to be eliminating the uh, clutch uh, cable altogether. We're going to be going for a hydro setup. This kit that I'm using is uh, made by Hush Performance. There's also a link in the description to this product and their part. They're actually a really great company. Please go to their YouTube channel. They have a YouTube channel that shows you all the install videos of how to do this specifically. Install is supposed to be a bit challenging, even according to them, but we're gonna try to work it out and get this in because I'm really excited about it. As far as the pedal feel is concerned, they say it's gonna be about the same pedal feel. I'm not really worried about that, so let's get started. So I have my pedal set out here along with the hush kit and the different parts we're gonna show you real quick. This is the bracket that kind of goes on right about in this section you're going to have to remove the uh, clutch switches they will no longer be needed or be able to be used after this the other thing i must say is that this is an off-road use product only so keep that in mind before you go and purchase this and installing it this is going to be my first time attempting this so we're going to see how bad it is or how good it is i'm going to give my honest review once it's all said and done the slave cylinder is will wood um, and it basically mounts up to here to the bracket. Then we have the reservoir, the little bracket here, we're gonna mount on the firewall and the hose. And then of course, our clutch line that's going to the slave cylinder. And it actually has a little piece here that we're gonna be putting at the firewall, drilling a hole and putting this in the firewall so that we can run uh, two pieces easily. And then this runs from the master cylinder here to the slave on the transmission. This kit will work with a uh, stock slave cylinder. Uh, if you notice here on my transmission, I actually have this little broken piece here, quite common. I ordered the Willwood pool setup that goes in between here. I'm gonna have to drill a hole here and mount it here. Um, I'm waiting for that to come in the mail because I'm stupid and didn't give them the correct address. The kit will work with a stock slave cylinder and it will actually also work with a uh, cable transmission as well, which is interesting enough. You just need the little hot sport bracket. First thing I'm gonna do is mount this thing up to the pedal set. We've gotta remove uh, the switch here, the switch here, and the nut here. Here I have a bunch of tools and everything everywhere I'm trying to show you how this works. Now I'm going to direct you to Hush Performance's channel. Please go subscribe just so you can see all the ins and outs of this because they have very extensive videos explaining how this works. I've watched all of them and I'm gonna give you the highlights, but I will suggest that if you do purchase one of these, go to their uh, YouTube channel and watch their install videos. Now here we have the bracket here and we have the Willwood master cylinder here. The main objective is that this is an adjustment screw this is also an adjustment screw. So it mounts here, here, and here. I also kind of bulk up the whole thing entirely. Now, they have a lots of adjustment on where your position is because over the years, these pedal sets tend to move and warp and change. And so they have a lot of adjustment. And at this point, I have everything pretty much tightened down, ready to go. 
I still have to tighten everything up, but I do have this tight for the moment because there's a lot of adjustment in placing this master cylinder. And the main thing is to, is that this must be as straight as possible. They give you these options here of washers that you can kind of move and flip around. That is as straight as I could get it. And I went ahead and uh, tightened it down because I will be honest, it is a bit tricky doing this because the pedal set is kind of big and I mean, you just want to make sure that you get all the uh, everything right. Um, but the functionality so far seems pretty damn awesome. This is still loose. You know, this can be, you know, spun in any direction as well as uh, the uh, feed line to the slave. So it's, it has a spring in it. So you can also remove the spring that goes here. Just keep in mind to keep everything loose until you get everything where you need it to be and then tighten everything down. Okay kids, let's talk about this pedal assembly here. There's a couple things going on that people should be aware of um, and a couple of concerns that I have. Um, number one, with this in place, you have to remove the uh, air duct for the driver's side vent uh, all the way on the left side. I've already removed it, but you're gonna have to remove that I've already test fitted this into the car and pulled it back out, just being 100% honest. And it's not Hush Performance fault in a way, because, you know, this is definitely like, uh, you know, some race car shit. And, you know, they're always uh, revising their product. The one issue that I have is that I don't see a way to get to that bolt hole for the brake booster. And I definitely feel that that nut is going to need to be on there. This bracket was here in the way even though you can kind of see the hole um, when you're underneath the car it, it really has a very difficult you know position to get to as well as uh, there's another mounting hole here that needs to be put on which is near impossible to get to um, with that being said what I'm going to try to do is I've already mounted it into the car once I've, I'm thinking about possibly removing the entire bracket and installing that once it's in the car with the uh, Willwood uh, master cylinder already still attached to the bracket. So it's got its position here. I will say this, the only other thing that I'm not crazy about, and it's, it's not their fault because you only have a uh, quarter inch to half inch clearance to be able to fit this in here. So you can't really move this piece further back anymore. But when you do push the clutch in, the clutch pedal is not going to go all the way to the floor. At least for all the adjustments that I have, I've gone over and over for an entire day with this. Uh, because they advise to take as much time as possible to make sure all the adjustments are where you want them and where they need to be. So far, I've got this set up here, and really everything's kind of dialed all the way down. It seems like it's going to work fine, but me in particular, I kind of want, like the pedal, to at least get a little closer to the floor so I have it where I want it, which is actually just about completely maxed out on this. Now, I'm pretty sure it is not the same for the EF pedal assemblies. It's definitely a little more forgiving. DAs definitely have a lot more stuff stuffed in there and yada yada yada. I'm thinking that the easiest thing to do is to actually remove this bracket, install the pedal assembly, and then reinstall this. It's going to be difficult to definitely get this uh, nut back in. Uh, this one won't be hard. That one's easy and uh, obviously that one will be easy. It's not too bad but I will show you. So one of the things I had to remove was the uh, driver's side vent over here you can see. Um, here's the bracket. It's kind of a pain Basically, I tried not to remove the dash in this. Pretty much had to remove uh, one, two, three, four bolts out of the dash to get the dash to pull off far enough. Um, so you could see that there's, you know, it's very tight up in here and this is the area in which, you know, it's going to be very close to right up in here. Um, I really, and there, there's another thing, it's very difficult to do a lot of the things, you know, as far as tightening and things like that in this space. So I'm going to try to you know, come up with a better system other than just mounting it onto the pedal set and then trying to throw it in here. Um, and it's also quite difficult to get the pedal set with it on here in here because such it's really just the pedals, trying to get the pedals around everything and it might be me just being a little bit lazy. Um, I'm not retaining cruise control so I may just go ahead and remove that cruise control box. But for the most part, I gotta be honest, it's actually a really great product. You know, this is definitely, um, you know, kind of like a pioneer thing that they're doing. No one else is doing what they're doing. I'm gonna go ahead and um, see what sort of system I can get going here to get this thing up in here. And I'll try to do my best to explain uh, how I did it and, and, you know, how it worked. 
Okay, now you can see where we're at. We're in the engine bay. There's a hole here. I've got a little grommet that covers it up. Um, we basically have to drill a hole, but we need to drill a hole. I'm gonna drill one right underneath here using a stepper bit. All right, so that fits there, nice and neat. Um, it's actually gonna be flipped around. We're gonna put this through the other way. Uh, but this fits there nice and tight, so I'm gonna go through on the other side and push it through. I'm definitely gonna have to wait till I get a friend over here to kind of hold the other side. I'm gonna try to get a little snug right now. Now anybody that knows anything about clutches knows that this is a pretty low point and that the line is going to have to come out and kind of go up over the transmission bell housing onto the uh, slave and it's going to require basically a vacuum to bleed this otherwise it's going to be a nightmare to bleed this system which we are going to have so just keep that in mind this is definitely not you know your average bleeding technique that's going to have be required so so here's a little sneak peek so far it's tuesday i just kind of mocked up the lip and the headlight corner light and uh, the wheels are going to be polished slips obviously you're going to see that at the end of the video it's clear corners amber bumper light basically i'm at a standstill so once i touch up the engine bay i can put the uh, brake booster on i can put the pedals back in i can run the hydro setup um, i'm going to touch up the engine bay i'm waiting for that paint to show up so i'm going to take my time with this another thing i wanted to mention about doing the hydro setup up is obviously we have the mount here uh, you're gonna need a mount I've got a Hosport mount thank you big thanks to Brian from Hosport for that the rear bracket uses 17 millimeter bolts and I had to drill um, these out to fit the 19 millimeter bolts so it bolts up to the tranny no problem don't forget you have to do that okay so here we are got the engine bay clean and actually resprayed kind of see I, I just used a rattle can Basically that I ordered off eBay that was the same color as the original. I don't know if you could tell, but it looks really clean. Now I'm starting to set the uh, headlight in, uh, get everything kind of put back together. I'm gonna come over here. Now I'm gonna try to explain this as best I could because we got this in last night. All right, so we got the pedal set in. Uh, and what I did was is I installed the pedal set first and then I went ahead and installed the uh, Hush Performance bracket and uh, master cylinder was already installed on the bracket and I just, connected the bracket everything still seems pretty well aligned and it's it seems to be working no problem we have the line ran from there over down here by the gas pedal if you could see it right there to it there that is the reason why I basically didn't film trying to fit all this in here if you notice see it in there um, is that you know, Hush Performance is very honest about how difficult of a process this is. I would not suggest this for a beginner, but anybody that definitely has some uh, wrenching experience of, uh, you know, swaps and things like that, it's definitely something you can do. So, you can tell I still got the uh, interior torn apart, cluster over here. I've basically got a mess everywhere. My new uh, 92, 93 XSI cluster came in. Thank you so much to Eric for that. These are very rare, hard to get a hold of and he was very nice enough to uh you know hook me up with this at a great price this is the original ls and this is the uh xsi i still need to uh get the steering column all buttoned up the way it should be and put the dash back together the way it should be um and the motor is prepped and just about ready to go the motor's just been fresh to kind of clean and you know a little touch-up paint job i'm also going to be powder coating the uh, valve cover hopefully after I get it in. So it's the same B20 VTEC motor that was in the DC2 and uh, I'm gonna try to see if I can't get this thing in today as I'm still waiting on the slave cylinder uh, from Hush Performance and uh, this will need to be drilled out. Once I get all that taken care of then it'll be you know as normal stuff that you've seen me do on this channel a billion times. All right we got the engine over here strapped up ready to go in to this guy. We've got the uh, reservoir for the clutch mounted up. Let's do this. Oh, I got power steering fluid on my ass. That's what that is. <laughs> we got the motor in. Uh, or a uh, hot sport mount here. <laughs> got the hot sport mounts. Big thanks to Brian Gillespie and uh, VTech Academy for hooking me up with the uh, mount there. Of course, we're going to be doing the Hush Performance setup. Went ahead and 
drilled that out. I'll go into more about that when I install. Here's the clutch line. So that's it for tonight. We'll get back at it tomorrow. Looks good. Here we are the next day. Uh, I've been working for the past couple hours, getting uh, things kind of tidied up here. As you can tell, I got the air box in, not a big deal. Um, I've got the axles in, and one thing I should note is that I am using the 93 Integra half shaft. Don't ask me why, because I'm stupid. I should have sent it with the other transmission, but I completely forgot that the uh, seals are different. Uh, whenever you're running a hydraulic transmission, you have to change out the seal for the half shaft. So the transmission seal on the driver's side, basically. Uh, you need to use whatever seal that corresponds with your half shaft. So if you have a 94 and up half shaft, you need to use the 94 and up seal, 90 to 93, obviously the 90 to 93 half shaft and seal. Okay, so now that's covered. We still gotta get the wiring on. I've got the suspension in. I've got the axles in. I guess at this point, the transmission could be filled with fluid. Clearly, we still got a lot of things to do to button up. I'm hoping to see how far I can get today. We're really still waiting on the uh, slave cylinder from Hush Performance. We've got the hole drilled through there already. Now, the reason why I didn't show that stuff is because I want to direct you to Hush Performance's channel. Basically did what they did is I took a grinder and I grind down, I ground down the backside, as you can see, you know, it's kind of grinded here too. But I ground down the backside just until the point I could start to see uh, light uh, through through this thing. So I ground down the backside, and then once I did, I was able to put like a step bit and drill through it. I mean, it might need to be uh, drilled out a little bit more once I get the slave cylinder here, but we won't know that till we get it here. Should be here in a couple days. I'm trying to figure out how to kind of fit this uh, intake piping in here, the GSR manifold. I'm thinking that, you know, I definitely probably might need to get a Skunk 2 manifold, but definitely not gonna do that anytime soon. I'm just trying to get this thing in here, running it back on the road, and then of course we can then modify in the future and upgrade and blah, 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 blah. I've got the reservoir mounted right here, nice and tight. I use an existing hole to kind of bolt in uh, into there. The red hose here, if you notice I used the boot from the uh, uh, clutch cable and the red hose is going underneath here. I've got to cut that to fit underneath there and then of course uh, we're gonna have to bleed the clutch system with a uh, vacuum. I'm not 100% sure I'm gonna use this air box because as it sits, the hose doesn't quite reach and fit. Um, so I'm kind of looking at other airbox options. Might try EK airbox or EG, or actually maybe even a DC2 airbox would probably fit nice. But of course, at the moment, I do not have one. So I've got to get the harness onto the motor. I will later need to add the VTEC wires and AIB, but at the moment, I'm not worried about that. I'm just trying to get this thing back on the road at least in the next couple of days. Okay, so right now I'm getting the wiring on. If you notice, you can barely see any, which is because I'm sort of tucking it. I've got the uh, injector wires coming up through uh, the manifold from underneath. Basically what I like to do is work on one side at a time and then you know, come over here and then deal with all this stuff so you can see all this stuff is still, you know, kind of over here that I still need to deal with. Uh, but right now what I'm doing is kind of getting everything underneath hooked up, oil pressure, the alternator. I'm going to have to extend a wire to the air temperature sensor because uh, the one is a little too short. Everything else uh, seems to be no problem as far as fitting. This, this uh, plug here, these two plugs, um, I'm going to have down there. You can see that little plug down there where the cross number is. I'm going to tuck them back, back down there. And I'll probably have to um, uh, cut and extend this wire so that it goes, I, I gotta see if I can separate it enough out of this loom. It's gonna have to go back up through this to the uh, floorboard to the fuse box. So that's where we're at. I'm gonna keep fishing all this through and I'll show you the final product here. Okay, here it is. This is the harness all kind of tucked away. It does look like a mess of shit over here. Uh, hopefully we get a nice little air box going on kind of covered up make it nice and concise but I mean, here's our plug wire for the distributor I've cleaned those a little trick if they're dirty as hell and they're not real blue get a rag and some uh, 
brake cleaner, spray them, wipe them off, makes them nice and new looking. Okay, the VTEC wiring, we're not gonna worry about at the moment uh, because I have to go in, to the junkyard and get some extra pens for the ECU to wire it up anyway, so uh, I'm just kinda holding off on that. That's not a big deal at the moment. Uh, the map sensor is not hooked up because it's normally on the firewall over there. What I'm gonna do is get a plug and uh, run them, you know, hook it up and run them down underneath where I've got the harness and just uh, match the three colored wires uh, to where they go. So that should be relatively easy. I've also got the radiator in at the moment, but if you look at it, I mean, it's all hooked up, wired up, and you really don't see very many wires. You know, and this is like minimal tuck. This isn't like super serious. Now, of course, I could have bought a rye wire, but I wanted to save some money. So it's been a long process for this one because a lot of things have been kind of step by step. Uh, but everything so far is looking really good. I can't wait to drive it, you know. I know you guys have been waiting for a video for a while. So anyway, onward and on. Upward and onward, onward and upward. Ran a power wire and everything down here. Got the ECU and the fuse box. Can't really see that. It's gonna poke out a little bit. Um, got some of the interior back together. Pretty much have everything run for the battery box back here. Still trying to finish everything up up here. I've got the uh, XXI, XSI cluster in. Light will probably die out. So I've got all this stuff put back together. I've got the double DIN in, shifter in. I used a B&M dual bend short throw shifter. Uh, pretty much got a few things left to button up underneath the dash and then uh, gonna put the steering column back in. You know, I'm getting closer, I'm getting closer. Been a long day. Can't wait to get this thing out on the road and then eventually get it to the paint shop. So I kind of noticed that these bolts here are kind of old and busted. You know what I mean? So like the normal thing would be order some Downstar hardware. But since he's on the other side of the country and I don't really feel like spending that much money, I went to Ace Hardware and I spent $8 on these. So, I think they look pretty good. I made sure that I got the right thread. Probably could have got them a little shorter, but there we go. Here's my Ace Hardware, Ace Star Hardware. Um, we had to put oil in this sucker. We just drained it. Here's the Willwood Slave. Got to get this to go through this little hole down here. Got to drill it out a little bit. It's not quite big enough. Okay, so it was a little difficult to film this and get this in here. So, this thing looks pretty cool. Uh, what you do is you uh, put it into the hole on the front of the transmission. It's got a jam nut here. And then, of course, a self-locking jam nut here to keep it in place. It does kind of move, rotate back and forth um, for positioning, which is fine with me. Obviously, that might rub, so we might actually change the angle once we bleed it. I don't know if you could see that. But basically, it's got, uh, goes, so we drilled a hole through here. It's got a little smooth wash that goes on and a nut. I've got that tightened on. Pretty much ready to go. Moving right along. I've got the map sensor plugged up and temperature sensor, air temperature sensor. Still got a wire VTEC, but I'm going to wait to do that. Okay, so here we are. We have everything put back together. I've got the wheels on. I've got the cross member on. I can't see that. Got the air box in with a little bit of an extension on it. We've got the cross member on, and now we're getting ready to bleed the Willwood setup here. Okay, so here's the Willwood uh, slave. We're getting ready to bleed it. Now, this is definitely gonna be a little bit more crazy than your typical. We have a industrial bleeder. We got the Blue Point Fluid Evaporator Plus. And if you're doing some serious brake jobs or clutch jobs. All right, we've got fluid in the reservoir. Getting ready to go, and the master drew is going to help us. All right, I've got my dot three here. Who's going to? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to have a hydro clip on here. So only way I get all the uh, air out of the hard bricks. Bricks, yeah. How much did that thing cost, man? I don't remember. I bought it four years ago. 
Really? Yeah. So you just had that thing laying around? Yeah. You're just like, yeah. Uh, well, here it is. <laughs> the clots is getting blood. <laughs> Do you feel like it's bleeding? Shit! You spill the brake fluid like a dum dum. Jesus. You try to have a clean engine bay and just you ruin it. Oh, she's going down fast. Hold on, she's coming down. Yeah, I mean, it looks like it's. Got to get you doing the little tiny black one. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I was letting that uh, keep pulling on a little bit. Longer. I got you. I got you, cuz. Everybody's asking for videos, Mark. Look at that. We got weeks. I had somebody like Mark, curse at me on Twitter. And they were like, "I need some new videos, fuck." <laughs> Shit, man. Of course, you know. There we go. All right, push it down. Let go. Awesome. Keep doing it a couple more times. That's awesome. So when we get on the street, we see how she re. So here we are the next day. Got it running. Drove it home. Got the stock air box kind of figured out with an extra coupler. Right now we're just adjusting the ride height because the front was a little low, or the front was a little high, and the rear was a little low, so we're just kind of adjusting it, about to do the passenger side now. May have, you get 25 years old. I mean, look at your clear coat, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, this repainted. I think this was, I think this was repainted at one point. So I mean, down here lower, it looks a lot darker. Mm-hmm. Let's see. OEM, let's see. I mean, this is where you get that contrast of like, before and after. Yeah. So before. And after. I mean, of course I didn't have the ABS. Which makes things a whole lot easier. basically had a day or two to drive the Hush Performance clutch conversion, hydro clutch conversion, and I must say that I really love it. Um, it is, a lot of people think that the pedal feel is going to be soft, and it's really not. Um, that mostly has to do with um, the ratio for the pedal and its engagement point on the actual pedal itself. So it doesn't really change the feel into a soft hydraulic feel, but so the pedal feel is a bit heavy, but it translates like a hydro clutch. So, I mean, if that makes any sense, if that makes any sense to you, it like you understand where the clutch is engaged. If you're used to feeling the cable stretch, you don't have that feeling anymore. It's like a, you know, a, a shorter travel and you can tell where the engagement is and disengagement is every single time and it's it's a it's a different feeling it's it feels like a hydro clutch but heavy if that makes any sense but so far I'm really happy with the kit I definitely would recommend it and uh, if you would like to get one 
You can go to their uh, website, Hush Performance, at bigcartel.com, and uh, use code HSG for 10% off. Uh, so if you're interested in that, they make them for EFs as well as DAs, DB2s, and all that stuff. So go to their website, check it out. And even if you just have a normal car and you'd like to do like the reverse slave cylinder, same thing. You could use code HSG and, uh, you know, get 10% off of that. So go check it out. Um, I'm really happy with this, actually. It feels really good. All right, so that's pretty much it for this episode. I just want to thank everyone for all of the support that you've all given me over the last five years and uh, the last year and the last few months, honestly. The last few months have been a little bit difficult uh, for a number of reasons. I'll go into that into the next video. But I just want to thank everybody, Robert Diaz uh, from Hush Performance and Brian Gillespie from Hossport, uh, my girlfriend, she's been very supportive. And all my friends that have helped me out with this build, thank you so much for making this one possible. Um, you know, once again, follow us on Snapchat, Instagram, Facebook, and click subscribe. We'll see you in the next video, hopefully sooner rather than later.